Okay, so we see how we can translate functions or shift functions by either adding something to the very end, which is a shift in the y direction, which makes us go up or down, or actually replacing all the x's by like x plus 3 everywhere, in which case we would shift to the left by 3 units, or x minus 3, in which case we would shift everything to the right 3 units. Okay, but what if you just take a function that you know and love, like the parabola, you know, f of x equals x squared, and what if you just multiplied it by something? Like what if you looked at, you know, 2x squared. What's the effect of multiplication of a function by a number? Well, let's see if we can figure out exactly how that would affect things. So let's actually look at the function f of x equals x squared. And so let's put up some axes here and see what it looks like. We know it's going to be this happy face parabola. Not a big surprise. In fact, we know it's always going to be have positive y values since, in fact, we know that, uh, oh, what am I writing to? f of x equals 2? <laughs> what in the world? Where is my mind? Uh, I want this to be f of x equals uh, x squared. Now, sometimes, have you noticed that, have you done this? You've written 2 when you meant to write x squared? I do that all the time. So let's just patch that up right there. f of x equals 2. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. OK, now let's actually try to um, plot some points just to see. Now we know exactly what this looks like, but I want to be accurate here. So I've got 0, 0. At 1, we're at 1, because 1 squared is 1. At 2, we're at 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks like this. And there we sort of see the parabola. Now we've got the exact same thing going on, on the negative side. So I have negative 1, 1, and then 2, 4, minus 2, 4. And if I connect them, we should get this beautiful looking parabola. Look how gorgeous. You know, drawing live parabolas, by the way, is a lot harder than it may look. You try it. Get a whole bunch of friends together and draw a parabola right in front of them. It's harder than it looks. Anyway, this is the function f of x equals x squared. OK, great. Now, let's consider a different function. Let's consider this function now. Let's consider f of x equals 2x squared. OK. Now, so what I'm doing is I'm taking, I want to take this parabola and I want to multiply it by 2. Now, what's the effect going to be? Well, we know it's not going to be a shift effect. Because if we're going to shift it, that means we have to add something to this. If it's not going to be a slide or a shift this way, because that means I replace the x by x plus 5 or x minus 5 or something. So we're not going to be shifting it. The parabola is going to basically stay in place somehow. But this is going to be some sort of distortion in some sense. And in fact, you could think of this as sort of like a stretching or contracting of, of the curve. And so what's going to happen is the following. Well, let's just try some examples and plot some points. If I plug in 0, notice that 0, 0 squared times 2 is still 0. So that point, in fact, doesn't even move. Maybe nothing moves. Well, let's see. What about at 1? Before I was at 1. Where am I now? Well, now when I plug in a 1, I get 1 squared, which is still 1. But I've got to multiply it by 2. So that gives me 2 now. So notice that what's happening is this point at 1 no longer is here. It's now going to live way up here at 2. Similarly, if I plug in negative 1 and squared, I get 1 times 2 is 2. So I'm going to be way up here. So these points now get moved to here. Where would this point get moved to? Well, this point is 2. It used to be at 4. Now where is it going to be? It's going to be at 2 times uh, 2 squared, which is 8. So in fact, this point is going to get moved way, 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 way up to about here. And similarly here, this point will get moved way up to here. So what, what does our curve look like? It sort of looks like the parabola, but I've sort of brought it closer together. Those two wings are getting closer together. Do you see how they want to sort of be sharper now? It's going to be a sharper parabola. So what we're going to have here, and I can connect the whole thing. I'm just going to connect the part down here so you can see sort of how that would look. So it's going to be a much sharper parabola in the, from the sense that these wings, in some sense, closed up a little bit. It's still the same kind of parabola curve, but now it's, in some sense, more steep. The steepness has increased, because instead of being out here, it's now here. So when you put in a multiplicative factor that's bigger than 1, what that does is it actually makes things more steep. It makes the steepness greater. So if I have a nice, you know, happy little parabola like that, multiply it by 7, and it's going to be even more steep. So it's going to come down and then shoot up and then come back. It'll be really, really steep. The bigger the number, the sharper the steepness is going to be. 
What happens if you do the opposite thing? Let's take a look at what happens if we multiply by a number that's small. How about a half times x squared? Well, let's make a guess as to what we think is going to happen, then see if it actually happens or not. What's a good guess? Well, if I multiply by a number that's bigger than 1, it makes things really steeper. If I multiply by a number less than 1, in some sense, maybe that should make things less steep. Maybe it should actually flare up and actually make the thing elongated and more genteel. Let's see if that's really what happens or not. So let's plug in some points. Well, notice it's 0. When I square it, I still get 0 times a half is still 0. So in fact, this point's still 0. What about at 1? Where originally the function was at 1, when I multiplied it by 2, it's a 2. Now when I multiply it by a half, it's only at a half. So in fact, it looks like our intuition may be correct. That point is sort of moved down now. Similarly, with minus 1, we're going to be still at a half. At 2, instead of being at 4 or at 8, now I'm going to be at 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So you can see it really is the case that now the parabola has been sort of elongated. And now is more, more gentle, you see? So when I multiply by a number that's less than 1 but still positive, then it sort of makes the curve sort of less curvy a little bit more flat in a way. When I multiply it by a, a factor that's actually greater than 1, then it tightens the things up. It exaggerates all the stuff. Let's try, let's try another example. Let's try this one. Let's take a look at g of x. Remember, I can call these things anything. I'm just going to call this g. Call it f of x equals x cubed. Okay. Well, how does that look? Well, we know what the graph of that looks like. That's a standard looking cubic. Let me plot some points really fast. But, but hopefully, in your mind, I want you to get in the habit of thinking of a, a cubic. It looks like this. I'm just going to sketch it for you real fast. Comes down like this. Doom, doom. Has the three wings. One, two, three. That's what a cubic looks like. Let's still plot some points to get it exact. Zero cubed is zero. One cubed is one. So one cubed is one. 2 cubed is 8, so it's way up here. And here I've got minus 1 cubed is minus 1, and minus 2 cubed is minus 8. So the parabola looks sort of, I mean, the, um, sorry, the um, cubic. Looks something like this. There's the cubic. OK, well, let's take a look at what happens when I look at half of that. So let's take a look at the function g of x that equals half of this cubic. Well, what does that mean? Well, what it should do is it should make things, in, in fact, less steep. So somehow, my guess or my thinking in my mind is this wing is going to be coming down more like this, and this is going to be coming down. It'll be more gradual. That's my guess. Let's see if that's really right. So at 0, I still am at 0. At 1, I used to be at 1, but now I'm going to be at 1 times a half. So it's at a half. You see how the functions fall? If I put in a 2, instead of being at 8, I'm now going to be at, at 4. So I'm way over here. And similarly down here, I'm going to be at minus a half, and here I'm going to be at minus 4. And so you can see that the cubic that I get in green is the same basic shape, but it's a little less steep. And if I were to multiply this by an even smaller number, like maybe 1 over 10, it would even be more dramatically less steep. It would even be more dramatically less steep. Yeah, you figure that one out for yourself. So that might be something like, you know, uh, 1 over 10 x cubed. I'm not doing this, by the way, to, to scale. I'm just trying to give you a sense. Whereas if I do something like this, if I multiplied it by a big number, like let's say I multiplied it by, like, you know, uh, 8, that would tighten it up. So I would, that would tighten it up, and it looks like this. It'd be sort of really dramatic. So I come down here. You see how it's like really tight now. So tightness means that we have a big coefficient. This might be like you know 8x cubed. A small positive coefficient will make things more relaxed. And so that's the sort of way to think about it. And the same thing with the parabola, I remind you again, is that this is a parabola. If you multiply it by a, a, a big number, what's going to happen is it's going to tighten up. If I multiply it, but same basic shape, if I multiply it by a small number, like let's say, you know, 1 115th, 
it sort of loosens up. It's still parabolic, but it sort of loosens up a little bit. Still a parabola, but a more relaxed parabola. So that's what happens by stretching, and that means just multiplying the function through by one fixed number. The number is big, the thing gets tight and more steep. If the number is sort of small but positive, then it becomes more relaxed. See, if it's big, you're uptight, right? And if it's smaller, you're sort of loose. Go with the flow. Try these.